The Chinstrap Guillotine is an extremely versatile submission. It offers more control than any other guillotine at the cost of sacrificing a little bit of choking potential. But I've shown in tons of my videos that even if I lose some choke, I'm still able to finish the submission. I'm gonna be showing the chin strap, how I do it, what goes through my mind when applying this choke, and how you too can be successful. And if you found my tips on the chin strap guillotine to be helpful, then be aware that I just released my entire guillotine instructional on my website, tylerspanglerbjj.com, where you can find all my guillotine secrets, setups, traps, and so much more. Now, let's look at some chin straps. In order to have any success with the chin strap, we need to understand the grip that's used and the blade of the choke. When I'm focusing on the blade of the chin strap, most of it's gonna be up here in the hand. It's not gonna be so much of the radial bone for this submission. We're gonna have a big focus on the palm and right up here towards the top of the thumb. When I'm cupping the chin, I'm gonna flip over my hand. I'm gonna have a great emphasis on power right here with the thumb. That's so I can easily crush this part of his neck and force it into the choke. Additionally, I'm gonna be focusing on this part of my hand as I'll be folding his neck into the chin strap. So again, we're focusing on this part of her hand to cup the chin, and for the actual choke, I'm getting him right here with my hand. Now that we understand the blade of the choke, let's look at how it's actually applied to someone. An easy way to get to this lock is with a snap. I can do this whether it's from a neutral standing position, or if I'm top, or even when I'm bottom. What I like to do is take my assist hand. I'll go for the back of the head, not down the neck where he's strong, but in the back of the head and pull down. From here, I bring the choking hand in, loop it closely, and I grab onto his chin. We'll see how the lock should actually look on his chin a little bit later, but for right now, I'm just cupping the chin, and I'm gonna pull out to the side. The reason I pull out is because it makes his neck have more tension on it, and it forces my thumb more into his throat. Now, from here, I can take the assist hand, go over my fingers to complete the lock. So with the assist hand in, I'm rolling him up until he taps. Don't underestimate how much your elbow helps out with this choke because the more I bring my elbow down, the more I fold him into the choke. Now we need to understand there are two ways to finish the chin strap guillotine where we can have it either in our armpit or in our chest. If their head is in our chest, we need to bring our chest over the back of their neck. This is clear because if we don't do that, they have a huge opening for their head to escape. Or we can put their head in our armpit and use our bicep and pec to keep them locked in. Now that we've seen the grip and the lock, let's actually see some moves with it. One guillotine I do constantly in my videos is this one-handed top side control. When I'm in top side control, I want to be chest to chest. Put the weight on him. Make him feel my weight. Then I can start to scoop my arm on the back of his head. I don't want to go too deep because I won't get anything done here. I want to stay shallow. Grab the chin strap and then I want to sit back to readjust my weight and push forward while pinching my elbow to my ribs. For that variation, I didn't have an underhook, but if you want to use an underhook, it's best to try and pass the guard by first establishing one, then going to the choke when their arms are free. I prefer to use pressure passing and then I scoop up the neck before I pass the guard. Once I can put some pressure on their neck and I have the underhook, this is a good time that I can start to pass by throwing my chest pressure into them. But if I go for the choke immediately, it won't work and it's just going to crank their neck. I first have to settle my weight backwards. Then I can reestablish my chest to chest connection. And once I have good pressure on top of him, all I need to do is pinch my elbow to force the submission. The elbow pinch brings his neck into my hand, so this is vital and cannot be missed if you want to finish them. But what about if we can't establish that strong chest to chest position? Well, we instead can go to mount. So assume we're in mount, we're in a high mount. The first step I need to do is get low. Chest to chest pressure, don't lose your mount positioning. I wanna pick which side I'm gonna choke with. If I'm choking with my left hand, I'm gonna bring my left knee up. This gives me a strong base, so when I fall to this side, I'm not gonna get rolled. My other knee is down by his foot, so I can prevent him from trying to shrimp into me. Now I need to adjust his head. I can stay low, push, pull, lift, etc. Whatever way you can find works best for you, use that to scoop into the guillotine. I like to pull, bring my elbow to the other side, then scoop. Now I fall into the chin strap. Again, we can finish the guy right from here, but if they're hand fighting, it's gonna to be tougher to do. Instead, I work up, bring my second knee up to his ribs, come to a standard mount, use your assist hand, start walking across the mat. The more you can move your hand, the deeper the choke will get. So don't make any big motions, make small motions not to lose it, and get the tap over your opponent. 
The two biggest secrets here are one, to pinch your elbow, and two, to walk your hand across. You can finish this submission just by pinching your elbow, but I like to think my partners are better than that and they're gonna hand fight. So instead, I have to start working up by posting on my hand. Once I can post off the mat, walk across, now we can't hand fight as the next two hard to access and I get a quick submission. Another pretty brutal setup we can do with the chin strap guillotine is to hit a guillotine from standing. So again, we're hand fighting, we're wrestling, I snap, I pull him down into the chin strap immediately, pull his face away, go to the lock. Do not want to be arm in for this one. Arm out, I don't wanna give him easy access to my legs. I'm gonna switch his head to be right in the center of my chest and we're going towards the guillotine. Keep this V shape with your hands, pinch the elbows in tight, and when he starts to pull his head out, because you know they will, follow them. Continue to keep your weight on top. When you feel you have the right angle, lift to get the submission. The V team works best when you're standing and you can stuff them in front of you. Because my hands are locked in a V, that means I constantly need to keep my chest on top of him, otherwise he's easily able to pop his head out. However, here's another spot where you can use the chin strap to get to the guillotine, and I really like it when I'm approaching open guard. I come in, I'm leading with one leg. If I use my right leg, that means the choking hand is gonna be the left hand. I enter the right hand, snap with the same side, and I go right into the guillotine. When I'm here, I'm shooting chin strap. Then I'm gonna make that same guillotine motion we saw earlier. I can just finish by compressing while sitting above him. This creates a future dilemma where if he doesn't want to get guillotine, I can easily spin to the back. But for right now, we're just walking in, going to the guillotine after a snap, and finishing our opponent. But what we need to remember about the chin strap guillotine is because we don't have direct contact to arteries, it's just not as tight as the other guillotines. A big concept in the instructional is understanding our grip efficiency. I never want to be squeezing at 100%. With the chin strap, I recommend a grip between 30 and 50% of your energy so you can hold it for long periods of time when they're trying to wrestle out or they just have strong defense. But here's a quick example of how long it takes to choke me out when I'm not resisting versus a standard guillotine going across both arteries. The time to execute is incomparable. If you're going with the chin strap, you need to understand you have way more control, but you just don't have the same choking potential. Finally, let's see how I do a chin strap guillotine from bottom. If my back's on the mat, I have terrible back mechanics I need to work up. So I start framing against him until I can get my hand and elbow to the mat that I can work my back up and start pushing against his shoulder. I take the same hand that was pushing against him and I loop it around his neck to go for a closed lock. I choose to go for the arm in so he has one less hand to post and I cut a 45 degree angle with the mat to finish. It is extremely important that when I reach for the head, I need to pinch the elbow down immediately. By pulling my elbow to my rib cage, I'm throwing his neck into my hand which greatly assists with the choke, then I bring the second in to complete the lock. Notice that once everything is locked in, I still keep my elbow pinched tight against my ribs and then I can compress my chest to finish. All of these details and so much more are included in my guillotine instructional. The instructional is now live and the next two people to buy it will get a free rash guard from xmarshall.com. Otherwise, if you want to get some great looking gear, go to their website and use promotion code TYLER10. xmarshall loves to give back to the community, such as giving my viewers free rash guards, and I really support this company. Go check out their awesome designs.